Okay. All right. Uh, welcome to ECS 36B, uh, fall of 2020. This is the, the second quarter that we pretty much put everything online. So this is a special experience for most of us, maybe the second time. For some of you, maybe uh, you're just joining UC Davis from another university this quarter. In any case, welcome everybody. Um, so, um, what I'd like to do is try to go over uh, the syllabus and also go over the homework assignment number one today. That's my objectives. And I will also explain my overall plan regarding how I like to run this class and how we're going to use uh, this meeting time uh, maybe very differently from what we did before. Uh, means that we go to the classroom and sit together. Okay. All right, so let me pull out, let me share my screen. Moment, okay, this is my screen. I hope you can all see my screen. So number one, welcome everybody. And uh, I'm going to show you my syllabus. By the way, you should have already received uh, email regarding this document. Uh, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger so you can see this. Okay, I think that will be good. Let me go over this. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Let me get this a little bit bigger. I think this is good. All right, so um, prerequisite. I just want to tell you that uh, according to the book, uh, you should have already taken ECF 36A, all right? If you have any concern with this prerequisite, you need to let me know, all right? So there was a, a, a discussion last quarter uh, for students who have taken ECF 32A and ECF 32B, um, the, the suggestion or the recommendation from the department is to take uh, ECF 89L, which is the sequence course developed by the 32 uh, sequence, okay? And uh, this is, oh, this one should be actually fall. I haven't actually modified this one. Okay, so this is what I want to, how I'm going to run this class. So just to let you know, um, for programming class, um, it's, it's my experience and also with other instructors' experience is that um, we are not like other style of teaching, like a teaching calculus or teaching some political science, which the lecture, lecture about the knowledge and you receive it and then you try to apply to the homework. In programming, it's actually going to be problem or project driven. It means that you don't learn from listening to me saying certain things. You really learn when you try to do it and make mistake and uh, to, to encounter the problem and realize something that you don't know. And what you learn is not just about learning the things you don't know, but you really learned about the process to obtain the necessary skill or, or knowledge to solve the problem that you don't know how to solve. Because in information technology or programming language, we just have way too many things. And therefore, it's impossible for anybody to know everything. We have to realize the problem we try to solve. And then in the process, we, of course, you have some basis. That's why we provide the bullet number one, some video to give you some concept, to give you some simple guidance, but that provide you not the whole knowledge about solving the world's problem, but that actually trigger you to solve some of the problem we gave to you, and then you will actually encounter and bump to the wall. And, and I always say, uh, voila, to students, for example, in ECF 30, 6a or ecf 36b i said whenever you encounter something we call runtime error sometimes we call segmentation fault 
and that's a good news. That's a good experience that will you will learn a lot through uh, resolving that issue. Okay, so having said that, so what we what we plan to do this quarter is that I will give you a set of pre-recorded video, which I already put in the in my uh, channel, but I will send you a message to remind you when you should watch which one or from which section to which section. And I'm going to produce more, by the way, just to let you know. And But the thing is that the course is really driven by programming assignment and the final project. And through that process, you will realize, well, how do I actually translate something which is conceptually maybe you understand or it's unclear to something concrete you can put into your code, try to solve a real problem. And that process is very important. So most of the time, I'm gonna use the time, which is including this three hour lecture, Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 4, 10 to five, but also my office hour, also discussion for us to interact to understand what the problem that you encounter. And then I will explain that, uh, um, why, why is that, for example, how to do certain step in certain homework. And we'll try to provide you that what is the gap that you're missing, and then you can actually solve that problem. So I just want to tell you what the channel looks like. Some of you might not have seen that. So I just want to tell you what happened. Uh, no, I don't want to do this. Can I kill this? Oh, I cannot do this. Oh. Let, me, let me click on this link. Okay, just, just show you that this will be at a more channel. So this is all the video we have. You can see that this is from last quarter. And I have some video, which is, which is like the one I show you, which is the, the lecture or or um, the, the different concept, like this one is a lecture three, talk about operator overloading. But then uh, I, I did demo from time to time. For example, how do I, how would you do homework assignment number one? And the rest of the lecture you can see that is actually Zoom. It's all Zoom section, like what we're recording right now. And inside here, we start to discuss real problem. And I'm, it's recorded because the problem is not just one of the student and usually other student can pick up. And it's interesting if you, if you watch the, uh, if you know something called uh, YouTube uh, analytics, you can see that how people click into the video. I just want to show you something which is quite interesting. I mean, I have a 200 student. I mean, I'm still wondering, some of the lectures only like uh, some of the students never watch it. But let me actually show you one thing. I hope you can see my screen. Okay, for example, this one has a 1,000 V. You can see that. I, I actually see when, when is, did it happen. Why? Because this was a due day for homework assignment number three, part two. And lots of people, when they try to solve that problem, they actually go there to grab it. And uh, I, I remember there was a one big one. I forgot. You can see that which homework is, is probably the hardest. Uh, I mean, the other thing I should announce is that the homework assignment from um, last quarter and this quarter, they overlap, but they're not exactly the same. You actually will, I, I will spend some time to talk about homework assignment number one. It's already different from last time. All right, uh, let me see. There was another one. I thought it was a big hitter. Okay, but anyway, you, you got some idea about how um, um, the course is actually recorded, and then we try to use this time to solve problem. So it's important for you to participate, to bring your problem into um, um, this time frame. Um, it's important um, because not just you have something you want to uh, get resolved, but also um, other students who uh, might have the same problem, but they don't express the same way that we can actually share that together. Uh, we also use some online platforms such as Piazza and such as, um, 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 for example, Facebook or, or other way. I mean, sometime last, last quarter, I remember um, Discord. There, we, we actually set up a Discord um, 
uh, channel, and there was a lot of good discussion under uh, Discord among students as well. So we're using all sorts of platform for us to kind of exchange information, but um, the YouTube channel tend to be the one who collect the most official answer to some of those questions. Okay, so just to let you know that this is an important channel. Um, for example, at the end of today, I'm going to upload this, this version, uh, this particular video to here as well. Okay, you will see that. All right, so um, <clears throat> we're going to actually cover, just to let you know from the topic, we have um, three topics we will cover. So we, of course, we talk about object-oriented programming, and I assume you already take uh, ECF36A, and some of you um, probably take in other places, other college, about uh, a related course. Um, so I assume you already know some of the, um, uh, the basic programming in C. And however, this is always the, the issue. In reality, different instructor cover somewhat differently. So we have differences in, in students' background in those topics. So that's okay. We always resolve this, uh, no problem. For example, some of the students missing one of the elements, even within UC Davis, there's two different versions of ECF36A. The instructor cover quite different in certain topic, and therefore one group of students might know something, other don't. So uh, sometimes I would just provide a short lecture to cover that. I mean, it's important that uh, we communicate so I know what's your background, what's the things, and then we can try to find a way to help you. The important thing is that through the homework that we can build everybody in the same level. So then gradually everybody learn those subjects. And of course, you're more than welcome to help each other to, to, to I mean, Helping others and teaching is best way to learn, by the way. Okay, so not just about programming. Uh, in this course, one of the mission is actually operating system. It means using, using operating system as a user and also programming environment. So you will see that I immediately get into the topic about some of the tools, some of the things that you should know, okay? And also, as I mentioned, that in order for us to, uh, to really know how to apply the concept of agile programming to the real world project, we're gonna have you to do that. So the, the project is a sequence of assignment that lead to, at the end, is a more and more complicated project, so just let you know, okay? Okay, so um, number two, I just want to tell you that I, uh, I will send you the video uh, clicks about what you need to watch. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the things I already cover. And we're gonna use this particular Zoom uh, channel for the rest of the class, okay? It's always like this. However, if, if by the way, um, on top of this kind of group Zoom meeting, um, I'll be happy to do one-on-one -on -one as well, or a small group to me as well. Uh, we have done that quite a bit because sometimes the student prefer to discuss with me certain topic in private. Uh, um, I, I remember I helped a student resolve an issue at 1 a.m. I remember that. And it was fun. I mean, it's like 1 a.m., two students, and then, uh, uh, I mean, in that cases, please don't be shy, just request, and I will give you another uh, number so we can uh, do that as well, okay? All right, let me see what, uh, <clears throat> okay, this is just, just uh, repeat what I said earlier. Let me actually move this a little bit over here. That this is, this is something for you. You, you will know that uh, you will, you'll probably hear me saying this a lot. You haven't written the program, you don't know what you're talking about, okay? So this is consistent with what I said earlier that in, computer programming, you really just have to get your hands dirty and then to do that, okay? <clears throat> All right, this is the video and I already have uh, some video I pre-recorded last quarter. So last quarter was the first time, so I spent a huge amount of time. So this quarter, I hope to reuse some of those 
but also if I see there are some new improvement, I will add it to that. So, so currently there are a bunch of video, like there's a welcome video, there was also pre-recorded lecture video and put it there for you to follow. But I will inform students at what point you should actually uh, already uh, watching which video, okay? All right, that's it. And textbook, all right. So um, I'm pretty happy with this textbook. So the textbook, let me just let you know that this one is a online textbook. For UC Davis student, it's free. That you can go to our library and, and just download it. Um, and so, so you can actually, if you actually use a VPN, you can actually download it from that link. But also just for students, some of the students have problem with VPN. I mean, I still have some problem uh, to access certain part of the world uh, when, when I travel and then try to access um, um, the VPN is not working really well. So I'm actually putting a local copy here. If you go to the local copy, this is the, all the chapter. Uh, so I break it into the chapter or you can have the complete book. So, so this is a textbook we're going to talk use. Okay, this is a textbook um, um, beginning uh, C++. This book is very thick. And the thing is that essentially this book is self-contained. And therefore, it actually not only cover uh, ECS 36B, but it essentially cover all the topics in ECS 36A as well. So what I, what I, the way I use this textbook is I directly jump to chapter 11. So essentially, in theory, not that, I mean, practically it's going to be somewhat different. The introduction is always good for you to kind of overall have the, some idea, but essentially chapter two to chapter 10 is actually talking about uh, some of the old topic that you are somewhat familiar with during ECF 36A. All right, so when I start the lecture, if you see my first lecture, I started with class, which is object the basic construct of object-oriented programming. And, and essentially what we really cover, really detail, every single bit is chapter 11, 12, 13, 14, and probably a bit of 15, and then a lot of 16 as well. So those are the, those are the, 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 the main chapter. And the thing is that, however, from time to time, I need to go back to refer to some of the subject. For example, chapter six is a topic uh, we will need to cover a little bit because uh, pointer reference addresses is always confusing. I mean, the best student from ECA36A sometimes miss a few things over there. And, and this is also related to something called virtual function and uh, those kind of things that we need to refresh. So, so we use the, the part from chapter two to chapter 10. It's more like a references or as needed, we kind of go back. But you're welcome to actually go back to, to refresh or to get something uh, that you don't think you have a solid uh, understanding. I mean, this book is well written. And the, um, the version of C++ compiler they're using is quite new. So if you use older version of C++, I would discuss about different version of C++ compiler, but they're using a pretty modern version. Uh, I think it's at least it's G++ version 11 or version 14. The latest one is 20K or something like that, okay? All right, so that's the textbook. The good news is a free. Uh, and, and you can access to that. And uh, uh, even better news is that it has all the homework assignment, has all the programming assignment online, and you can download the code. And we will have one thing, which I forgot whether I want to, I want to jump into this actually. Okay, here is the coding example. Remember I said I want your, your uh, hand to be dirty. So it's important for you to, let me click on this. Can I click on this? Okay, good. Huh. Here is all the source code with, the, with, this, uh, with, with this textbook. And not only I put the code there that you actually be able to run it, to do something, but I will have an automatic program to make sure that you actually at least compile the code and submit the result. 
So, so this is count as 20% of your grade. I want you to make sure you not only follow the, the programming that I assigned to you, but you also follow the course material, especially chapter 11 to chapter 14, and you can compile and you actually can run the program and generate the result and you submit to the server uh, we provide to check whether your result correctly. And we want to make sure that you have a lot of opportunity to do that as well. Okay. Okay, so here is the, here is the course requirement. So for the regular programming assignment is 60%, we have um, probably seven programming projects. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the first one. And, and then we will have uh, uh, the small program. The, this, is the, this is the program that I actually get it from the GitHub. All right, and this 20% is going to be for you to run that. I will provide you more instruction about how you're going to do that, okay? And, uh, and then we have a final project, which is because this course, we won't have midterm exam. I, I, I think it's, it's number one for programming, uh, the traditional written exam, in my viewpoint, maybe bias is ineffective in helping students or, or assess the students' uh, learning. Um, and, and given the online situation, that the, 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 it, it's getting hard for us to be, be uh, effective in education, be fair, uh, it, it's just, just hard. So instead, we're going to have you to do a final project, okay? So just to let you know that 60%, 20, 20%, that's, that's what we do. And I already talked about the topics, and, and also I just want to tell you that we have, oh, by the way, this is important. Uh, you might want to go to, this is our master place for you to actually receive all the resources, uh, the first link. Let me, let me just see if I can click it. Yeah, this is, this is the place. I actually should update this. This should be uh, fall 2020. If you go to fall 2020, this is, this is essentially uh, all the resources, including homework assignment number one is here, syllabus is here, and all the uh, uh, PowerPoint that's associated with the lecture are going to be there or it's already there, right? All right, and, and also I create a, a group for this particular student. I call it UC Davis, all right? Uh, if you click it, I don't know anybody joined, joined that yet, but I, I, I use Facebook a lot to, to discuss with the, the, the issue that student might have and make the announcement. Let me see, do I have anybody? Nobody invited, okay, please join this group. This is just one of the platform, but on Facebook, I hope you can, use uh, uh, UC Davis, uh, which might be related to our final project, just let you know the name. All right, so um, this is my name, I'm Felix, and uh, this is my email address. Uh, we have two TA, uh, Jerry and uh, Sammy. Uh, is either or both Jerry or Sammy here? Let me see if they're here. Maybe they're muted. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let them introduce themselves a bit later. All right. <clears throat> All right, so let me, let me stop here for a moment before I move on. Any question from anybody? Let me bring on my chat so I will know. Some of you might send me a, a, a message. Where's chat? Wait a minute. Ah, here. Ah, wow, I have so many things happen here. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, okay, so thank you. Uh, uh, Nikki, you probably got the question from Kimberly. Oh, okay, I hope I'm a mute already. Uh, 
No, I, I, I was talking about lecture here. This lecture is, uh, is uh, um, the first lecture, so I didn't ask you to uh, preview, uh, pre-record a lecture. But for Friday, before Friday, I'm going to ask you to watch this video. You should watch this video, pre-recorded video. Okay. GitHub. Okay, I, I will set up the homework one. Uh, oh, sorry, homework one. Uh, Zentong, I will, I will fix that, all right? I probably released it, but I haven't changed from spring to fall. Okay, let me see, so make sure, it looks like I'm okay. Okay. Okay, all right, all right, I, are there any important questions I should answer right now? Uh, because I think you guys are helping each other. That's Professor. okay. Uh, uh, I just answer uh, the the question from uh, I think is Gian Gian uh, regarding uh, the um, the Visual Studio Code instead of Window Plus W. SL, just Linux, you can do that. You can actually use just Linux or you can use Linux. You can use uh, Visual Studio Code on Linux. But the reason I provide window plus WSL is because some of the students, they don't have a full blown uh, Linux environment. For some of you who might know this, that WSL is a Microsoft version of a subset of a Linux, Linux feature and it's very nice because it has all the important feature for programming development. So just to let you know, of course, you can, you can do that as well. And uh, uh, for Linux and uh, Mac OS, Visual Studio Code is, is well supported. Okay, just to let you know. Okay, all right, so I'm going, to, okay, sorry, I interrupt some of these questions. Please go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering um, for our assignments if there's any particular grading rubric that we should adhere to or anything like that. Okay, we'll, we'll provide. That's a good question. We'll provide some guideline. I used to put like a one percent, two percent on each of the point, and we will. I, I will. I'll finalize that with a TA because they're going to do the grading, and then they will they will distribute that information. That's a good point, Kimberly. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Hi, Professor. Go ahead, uh, please. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah, when would the office hours be determined for both you and the TA? Okay. Uh, the TA, they have sent me the office hour I haven't updated. Uh, for me, the I will have, uh, um, I usually set up about a one and a half hour uh, block for uh, two times uh, per week is usually, 1.30 to 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. on Tuesday and Thursday, because our class is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I will set up my office hour to be Tuesday and Thursday. And on top of that, if you have some um, um, conflict, you cannot make it to the, then you can arrange with me for other, other time to meet as well. But I will announce my office hour. I'm sorry I didn't put it there. And uh, let, me, let me actually do that. Just over here to make sure. Where is where is my my own information? Ah, okay, so let me actually put it here. So this is my office hour. Let me say one thirty to three p.m. Tuesday and Thursday. But not tomorrow. Just to let you know, not tomorrow, because tomorrow I have I, I will have an interview in uh, San Francisco that I need to go to. So tomorrow uh, um, I won't be able to be there, host my office out. But we maybe probably Friday we I can arrange another time for this week's office out. All right. I have just another question. Go ahead, uh, please. Is, is it is it okay if we attend another TA's office? A session. Uh, say it again. 
Is it okay if we attend another TA's discussion? What What do you mean by another TA's discussion? So, so you said that we have two TAs, right? And right, there right. Might be two uh, discussion sessions. I wonder if we right. could attend mul multiple sessions. Yeah, of course, of course, you can attend multiple. Uh, we will uh, we will re record every single section. So therefore, um, um, if you miss one, you can actually still hear about the discussion from the other one as well. Of course. Will we know when the uh, when the discussion would be on the syllabus? The discussion time. Yes, the discussion time. I think I need to. I I will I will let the TA to make the announcement on Canvas regarding the detail how to ask us that. That's why I'm trying Thank to you. see if is Jerry or Sammy here. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll I'll talk to them and then announce to the class. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other question? Okay, I'm going to move on to talk a little bit about uh, some of the important issue, which I think is important that this is what you need to do for the first two weeks. Um, I, I realized that this um, might be familiar to some of you, but it might not be because it's, it's not about the programming, but it's about things that surrounding the programming and get the work done. So there are a bunch of uh, tools that that's actually important for you to know. For example, some of the tools called TAR, called GZIP, GUNZIP, or SFTP, SSH. As I listed here, that those tools are actually uh, important for you to uh, get around things, to submit your homework or try to transfer a file, and um, to basically be able to uh, learn things. And, and the thing is that sometimes um, um, you might have already used it in the previous courses and sometimes, especially for a student just uh, transfer into UC Davis, they have never used CSIF before. And, and therefore, uh, they might not be familiar with this. So I just wanted to tell you that um, you should learn these things. I actually provide links for you to learn uh, each of the, the tool. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you should really make sure that after the first two weeks that those commands that you actually uh, um, um, somewhat familiar with and at least use once, and especially when you develop homework assignment number one. Okay, so, so that's why homework assignment number one, part of that, I try to force you to use some of the tool. Okay, the other thing which is important, which um, I'm not sure that all of you have already learned the make. And this is very important for software development. And therefore, um, we will provide, I actually provide a, a tutorial, uh, not, not I provide, but somebody else provide, but I provide the link here, that during this first two weeks, you should spend time to learn what the, the basic uh, uh, principle about make, and uh, this is important as well. And the other related concept, I forgot whether I put it here, is called separate compilation. I think I mentioned that in homework assignment number one. Make is associated with another concept called separate compilation. It means that you can compile your source code uh, in different module and then you use a link to put them together, which is really important that why make is make is that they help you to kind of stitch all this file together. So that's why make is I expect you will spend time now you're actually being quarantined, and so you have lots of time, and don't play video game and just watch those uh, um, 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 uh, tutorial, okay? And the other thing is editor. You should know at least one major editor. Uh, most of you probably already know one of this too, but if you are not familiar with that, or you always use Visual C++ or uh, Visual Studio to develop a code, you should learn one of the editor that used for terminal, the regular terminal. This editor, the most common one is a VI or VIM. That's one class. VI, VIM is actually one type. And the other one's Emacs. You should make sure you know one editor. All right. I, I actually 
the reason I emphasize that I was so surprised uh, last quarter, at the very end of the quarter, I realized one student doesn't know this. And it's really hard for him to, to, to finish his work, okay? And also, uh, CSIF environment for homework assignment number one, if you don't know that, you're gonna use hand in, but that's actually covering homework assignment number one. And I recommend you not just use a plan window uh, environment, you actually use the, uh, some sort of what we call IDE, Interactive Development Environment. And the, the recommended one is called Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is also developed by uh, Microsoft. It, it's not Visual Studio. Visual Studio Code is a, like a nice editing environment and not as powerful as a Visual Studio itself. But Visual Studio Code is a free, it's a very popular uh, people in Google, company like Google, they, they all use Visual Studio Code. It's the most popular, you use this one, uh, it's very easy for, for you to collaborate with the, the industrial uh, position. And, and so, so you actually learn two different uh, development environments. One is a traditional make or G++ or GCC but the other one is Visual Studio Code. So that, that's, you have both of them being, uh, um, um, you can use both of them this quarter, okay? And the rest of the syllabus, I actually provide a notes about how to install the Windows 10 WSL, because as I mentioned, Visual Studio Code um, is, is very easy to install and run on uh, Mac or run on, uh, Linux, if you have a Linux machine, but if you have a Windows machine, then uh, then you probably need to follow this 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 tutorial about how to install uh, this. By the way, I just want to let you know for all the UC Davis student, uh, Windows 10 is upgrade is free. Okay, you can Windows 10 is is amount. By the way, my uh, researchers in operating system, I always feel that Windows is not as good as, uh, as uh, Mac OS or, or Linux uh, in terms of their, their stability. But Windows 10 is really impressive. I'm re I really like Windows 10. I want to give uh, Microsoft uh, surprisingly uh, a good credit for this. Okay. All right. Any other question? I want to use the rest of 10 minutes to go to homework assignment number one. All right. So do that. <clears throat> okay, I already released this, homework assignment number one. And homework assignment number one have two parts. Oh, what happened to my screen, sorry, this. So you have two weeks to finish this. Um, so part one is the same, by the way, is the same as the homework assignment number one last quarter. So therefore, I already have a tutorial to talk about homework assignment number one. That's why you can go to the button. I actually have a demo that's actually talk about part one already. So I'm not going to spend too much time here, but I want to tell you that what I did is you can see that I, I provide you step-by-step -step instruction about how you should download the code and run some program and do like that. And in the assignment, I actually uh, tell you that, well, for example, you need to use tar. Remember I said you need to use tar, you need to use a make file, you need to understand the concept of separate compilation. Therefore, I provide links here for you to actually uh, go through the, the basic command about tar, about make file, about separate compilation. You should go for it. And if you watch those, you still don't understand certain things, please let me know. We can discuss in office hour discussion or here as well, okay? So just to let you know, this is homework assignment nine. Part one, I'm going to skip it because I only have like a nine minutes. I want to spend some time at uh, part two. So part two is a new thing. It's, it's uh, different. I didn't ask the ECF36B student to work on this a lot, but I have a reason now for you to do this. Um, essentially today, um, in a lot of cases, our file is getting bigger and bigger. I mean, for example, the research database I'm dealing with, um, it has about six terabyte, just one single file, six terabyte. And to transfer the file or to move the file is horrible, especially you want to do it over the 
over the um, over the uh, network. And especially if your hard disk is really small. I mean, today is, I mean, of course we have six terabyte uh, hard disk more than that. But the thing is, if you have a one single file, six terabyte is actually not that easy to handle. So I'm gonna ask you to do this call, um, I call that my break and my heal. So essentially what you need to do is that you need to write the program that you can break the file into fixed size chunks. And for example, each chunk may be one megabyte or each chunk could be uh, 64 megabyte. By the way, it should be power of two. And then you write another program called my heal that you, you will be able to put them back together. So this is, you, um, let, me, let me put it this way. This is a good uh, kind of help you to leverage what you learn from ECF36A, which is the C program, and to how do you handle the file, IO, and handle some of the stuff. And so, so some, of the, some of you probably uh, already know this really well, but now you can actually put it to work. But some of you probably never get a chance to write the file IO code. And this is a good chance for you to learn all this stuff, okay? And I'm gonna skip the make file on debugging. You can actually take a look. But I want to tell you what the, what the file looks like. To make your life easier, or maybe for you to know what I'm talking about, I'm actually going to provide you a reference implementation for my break. So I have a, my code called my break.c and my, my heal.c, and you don't have to follow my code. You can actually design your own code, unless your code will be able to break the big file into chunks. And then you have another program to put those files into the original file. As long as you can do that, that's fine. And the my break.c is really help you to, uh, for those of you who actually somewhat don't know how to star, that you can actually take a look how I did uh, my break.c. But just to let you know, this is a trick. If you know, you, you, you see my, my break.c, and the thing is that my heal.c is just revert the process. Okay, it's just reverse the process and you can actually get it. I mean, how do you break it? That's how you're gonna put them together. So that's why I provide you, that might save you a lot of time, but you don't have to 100% follow. It's, you have to provide your own my, my break.c and my, my heal.c and get it to work. So, so I provide some example here. So I'm going to use a, a, uh, a, a, a live terminal to show you how it works, okay? Let's see. This is my terminal. Put this in here. No, I want to put this, this one. Okay. Now I can make my window a little bigger. Okay, that's my This is the program I was running. Okay, so I'm going to remove ttt dot star. I'm going to remove my prefix star. Okay, this is my directory. I hope you can see it. So I will provide you this program called my break dot c. Just show you that this is a program um, that that talks about how to break it. How many lines of code actually? Let me see, I forgot how many lines of code. It's, it's 96 lines of code, it's not a big program, okay? 96 lines of code. So how do I run this program? So I have a program, uh, let me see. Okay, you see that I have a file called, let me, let me actually remove this file. I want to remove this file because that was my test. Okay, I removed my program. So I have a big file. This is my um, database to analyzing suspicious account. Oh, I shouldn't show you the suspicious account. No, this one cannot be recorded. This is confidential. All right, I, I screwed up myself. Sorry about that. But this is a program that you can see is pretty big. It's about 710 uh, megabyte. All right, so, um, so I'm gonna break it into small chunks. So I already run the program earlier, so I'm just going to go back. Ah, here, here is a program. Uh, let me make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, 
why is my window coming up? Okay, this is fine. Okay, so just tell you that this is the program, my break. And the first uh, command is the source. You can see that the first, no, I don't want you. Where's my homework assignment number one? Yeah, okay, here. You see that the first one, the source, which file I'm going to break. So that file is the file I just show you, 700 megabyte file, I'm going to break this. And then when I produce the chunk, I have to name the chunk with a prefix. That's why you can say whatever name, you can say uh, XYZ TTT, my prefix. I just say TTT prefix. And this is important, the last argument, 65536, is the chunk size in K. Okay, it's a six, if I say one, that means each chunk is going to be one K block. But if I say, uh, 1024 is going to be one megabyte. So this one is 65333, so which means that each chunk is 64 megabyte. Each chunk is 64 megabyte. So I'm going to break it. So you can see that it start, my program start to break the file into small chunks, smaller chunks. Each chunk is still 64 megabyte. That's by the way, that's a similar, that's the, the file size for Google file system. Each chunk the, is, is 64 megabyte. Okay, so I break that 64 megabyte, uh, um, sorry, I break that 700 um, big file into 11 chunks of this um, um, 64 megabyte. So if I do a ls minus l, prefix, sorry about that. You can see that all the file is exactly 64 megabyte except the last one. The last one is not uh, 64 because it has some uh, remainder part of that. Okay, so I'm going to put it back. I'm going to use my heel. Okay, here my heel is also take a few parameter. Let me just go back to say what is the parameter size. It's the first one is a source, means that when you put them back, what is the file? And also, of course, I have to say what's the my prefix and all the chunk size and how many chunks, 11. That's why it has this uh, four argument to that command. And then I'm going to run it. So it's basically put in all this file. Sorry, give me one more minute and I will done with this demo. Okay, so I'm generating this file. So now you see I have a two file. One is original one, one is putting in the hair. Here's important, you have a comment called diff. It check whether this two file are binary identical. So I'm just, I'm just compare this two. There shouldn't be any difference. So they'll compile, uh, compare the 700 megabyte file and then there's no difference. So one of the things your my heel need to check is that you make sure you have everything. For example, if I remove one of them, sorry, my prefix, let me remove the seventh block. If I remove it, if I try to heal it again, So you have to consider something goes wrong. I mean, the other things which I check, I won't have time to share with you online is that if you change the size and sometimes your block is 64 megabyte, but you only say it's a, a 16 megabyte block. If you put it here, it's a 16 megabyte, then it will say the, the, the size doesn't match, okay? So you can see that I remove it and then it check, it realized that it cannot get this. So it will fail. Uh, to heal back. So that's the, that's the homework assignment. Um, so just, this is my first introduction to this and you should start looking into this and then uh, on Friday, we can actually talk about more about this, okay? And I, I provide some instruction about how you can, um, 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 how you should actually create on the CSIF environment, how do you submit? I mean, 
I really use CSIF as a as a as a um, a backup development. I hope that you can use your own computer to develop. And when you need to submit your homework, you actually go CSI to submit. And I will have, even for homework submission, I have uh, another plan, which I will reveal to you later. Okay, so I think this is going to be the, our first lecture today. I just wonder, if there, is there any question? Um, yeah, Professor, um, I so I just want to make sure for our normal lecture time, we will only be discussing about problems. Yes, we will use, uh, I will give some, some lecture, some short lecture, not, not a huge lecture, but short lecture uh, during this, the class time. Uh, and also I will use this to do some demo like what I did today. And the rest of the time, it will be more interactive. It means that you ask question, or student ask question, we try to resolve. And also the other thing which I will try to do my best is that I will gather around the question you ask between classes and through other channel or maybe Piazza and try to get an answer here as well. So I'm essentially, I extended everything to be like a discussion type. But then I expect you to, to watch the, the video uh, watch the pre-recorded lecture uh, before class. I mean, let, let me let me actually tell you why I did this. Um, because we have how many number of students? If we did like a traditional online lecture, um, um, the the network bandwidth is going to be pretty stressful for Zoom for this number of students. Just just the the network bandwidth problem. And but with this this kind of um, um, like question answering, it, it tend to require less bandwidth to do that. Does, it, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, okay. um, will we be able to find like the instructions of the small programming assignments in the homework? Say that again, I, I missed a little bit, Dallas, uh, what you said earlier. Uh, yeah, so like where will we where will we be able to find the instructions for the small programming assignments and the homework? Is that on Canvas or the Cyrus site or? Yes, I, I have an instruction. I haven't sent it out. I have an instruction. I even have a video doing the demo about the small program. Uh, the reason I won't be able to do that right now is um, for homework assignment number two which I will release uh, in a week. By the way, I'm going to have an overlap, like homework, uh, I will not let you start homework two. I will let you start homework two before even you turn in homework one. So homework two, there's a one objective is that you're going to get something I call virtual student ID. It's, it's because I don't want you to use your student ID for, for a lot of purpose. I want to use a, a much stronger uh, longer ID called VSID. And you won't receive that VSID, virtual student ID, until you start working on homework assignment number two. And you won't be able to access the small program server until you have that VSID. That's why I haven't been able to uh, get you work on the small uh, program. But uh, okay. we'll, we'll let you know, okay? Okay. Okay, any other question? Yeah, so the knowledge about like dividing the large field is in the pre-record videos? No, no, it's not in pre-recorded video. It's actually uh, the way I, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, so I just show you a demo, I show you the code, right? So what I, what I think when you say the knowledge about how to break the code, the knowledge is hidden inside my break.c, right? I show you this code, my break.c. So for example, so I will actually uh, update, so you will actually receive this file, okay? So, um, so this is a code. How I actually do that is about 89 lines of code. So I will be happy uh, at some time, maybe next lecture, 
to actually go over the code. But the thing is, some of you might actually already know uh, because you think that the really trick about the code is using a few system call called F read and F write. There's a few uh, like a system call uh, under Unix that were using this to read a file and break that file. F open those commands. So my preference is for you to actually read the code, try to understand this code. But then if you don't understand any part about this code, you ask me a question and I will explain to you what that particular lines of code, the logic or it's a system call and things like that. So that, that's, that's, but if you ask me, uh, did, did I answer your question, Tian? Uh, yes. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, my, my uh, let me just uh, go ahead, please. Uh, oh, sorry, Lucia. continue. No, no, go, go ahead, Lucia. It's okay. Okay, so, so the file that my provided, are we implementing it or are, we, are you giving it for us? No, I will give you, I will give you my break. I will give you both my break.c and make file for my break.c. You will have a make file, you will have a my break.c as your reference. So reference means that you can compile and you can just use my break as it is, but then you need to develop your own my heal.c, which is matching with your own, your, the, the my break.c uh, you want to have. But on the other hand, you actually can break it in a totally different way. And this is your freedom. But, but the thing is that when we actually test your program to see if that works, what we will have, we will use the make file to compile both your my break and your my heal. And we will we'll put a big file to, to, to actually do this and see if, if it actually, it will regenerate the right file. And also what we will do is that we will uh, remove one of the chunk to see your program my heal still detect that or we change the size of the chunk and see. So we have the three test cases that we will against your code when you submit it. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, I had a question, Professor. Sure, go ahead. Um, so uh, like you said, like uh, not all of us are um, have been in UC Davis, so we don't have experience with CSIF and stuff. So um, this is also my first year at UC Davis. And um, I'm just a little concerned. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm just a little concerned because uh, I haven't really worked with um, all these type of stuff like, you know, uh, like make file and how to like breaking a file and stuff like that. So what do you what do you want me to do before next class? Like are the resources in the in the document of the homework? Okay. Um, if Techar, right? That's your name, right? If, yes, that's correct. If, if thank Techar. You. Uh, um, no, number one, uh, welcome. And number two, uh, we, we will see that. I, I would like to know a little bit more about what you know, what you don't know. And then I would suggest a plan to, to how to, to best help you to, to kind of catch up the, the part that you might not have with CSIF. Um, there, there's, are, you, are you familiar with uh, um, Linux environment or Unix terminal? Um, I'm familiar with um, the Linux environment. So then, then you should be very fine. You should be very fine. I will, I will, I will actually, why don't you try to work on homework too and then see which part you feel. Uh, the make file, I, have, I do have a tutorial. I don't think anybody here is, is uh, even with ECA36A student, they might or might not really have a very solid introduction to make file as well. That's why, um, I, I mean, they, they probably use it, they probably do a simple one, but I, I hope that I make sure that everybody knows make file. So, so if you have any questions, let me know, we can do one-on-one -on -one, and then we can see that where we can. Oh, by the way, I do want to say one thing. That's, that's not going to apply. You don't have to answer, none of you need to answer this question, but you need to contact me. And there was a version of uh, ECA36A, it was taught in Python instead of C. So I might have students here who actually learn really well about Python but never uh, written a program in C. If you're in those cases, let me know and then we'll try to find a way to help you. Okay, you, you privately let me know. All right. All right, any other question? Okay, 
All right, thank you. I'm going to stop recording. Uh, you hear me? Hello? Oh, now I hear you. Jenna? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jenna? Uh, here's the thing. I've been uh, using uh, that uh, uh, Xcode for like for a really long time. Mm -hmm. So uh, is that ID okay for like for this class or do I, I, I no, use it's, it's fine. It's fine. You can use Xcode. You can use okay. Xcode in, in okay. the, in the, um, um, in the, in, in the requirement of the class, we don't restrict you uh, to use any um, um, ID. IDE, right. Okay. It's just recommended. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. I have a question, um, just real quick. So I am, I'm actually a grad student. I've been wanting to take ECS 36B for a very long time. Mm -hmm. but I also went to Davis for my undergrad, so I took ECS 30 a long time ago. Is that, mm -hmm. that's equivalent of 36A, right? Right, right, that's true. That's right. Okay. Would that be okay? Sure, no problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, I'm going to uh, stop recording and upload this to, um, to the server. Okay, and uh, thank you for all of you. And even though uh, we didn't get a chance to meet each other face to face, and hopefully uh, later this quarter, maybe, I will sometimes host my uh, uh, office hour outside uh, the Panera Bread and uh, with coffee, and sometimes you can join me and we can see see you in downtown. All right. So uh, I will I will um, end this uh, lecture here, and I will see you on Friday. Bye.